Hello and welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to the Boring Company and Elon Musk. Today I'd like to talk about an engineering challenge that will face the Boring Company and that challenge is how to get the actual TBMs or tunnel boring machines into the system because as you know Elon Musk wants to go 100 levels deep I don't think that is feasible. However, I think going maybe 10 levels deep is feasible. So how do you do that? How do you get these huge machines into the system? This is how I think you could do it. It's a difficult engineering challenge, but as they say, if it's difficult, then it's probably worth doing because what you get back in the end is something very, very special a real engineering feat and that's what I'm proposing. So, Boeing Revolution episode 7, we're going real deep and we certainly are. So, let's start off with talking about the definition of a shaft. A shaft is a very deep excavation. In fact, you could probably classify it as an excavation, but when people say shaft, it usually means something that is quite deep. So, a shaft is a long, narrow, typically vertical hole that gives access to a mine, accommodates a lift in a building, or provides ventilation. So, what do you use to shore up a shaft? Typically, you will use concrete or steel. Um, in the past, they have used timber. However, the best uh, materials are concrete and steel or a hybrid of the two. How deep can a shaft go? So I've got three examples of some pretty deep shafts. So Arsenalna, uh, it is a metro station in uh, metro station in Kiev is 105.5 meters deep, which is very deep for a metro station. It is the deepest in the world. Uh, we've also got Wooding Dean Water Well, which is near to Brighton in England, is 392 metres deep. And you wouldn't believe this, but that well was dug by hand by a team of men over the course of about four years in the 19th century. So what an amazing un undertaking that was. And it's quite a wide well as, as well. You know, it's quite wide. It's not some really tiny, thin thing. So uh, one of the biggest shafts in the world is the Moab Knotsong mine shaft in South Africa which is 3132 meters deep that's pretty much as deep as you're going to go really very very deep obviously for the Boeing company they, they're not even going to go close to a thousand meters probably a lot lot less than that so just to show you what is achievable so as you know, in this system, we will have our micro stations. If you've not watched my previous video on micro stations, please do. It's very, very good content for you to listen to and learn about the project. In a typical large city like LA, we could end up with up to 9,000 of these micro stations. Uh, they'll be relatively uh, shallow, um, but they are very important to the system. From a, um, an engineering perspective, reasonably easy to construct these because you're not going that deep and they're not very wide or very long. You're removing relatively small amounts of material to produce these shafts. So, the Boeing Company shafts. The, this is my personal opinion of what's going to happen. Obviously, this could change, but I believe this is the most practical means of doing it and it offers a lot of benefits in the long term, and I believe it is very, very cost effective. So there were two types of shaft for the LA and Chicago boring project. We are talking type A, which will be for the micro stations. They will range from 20 to 40 foot deep, and type B, which is our TBM entry and exit points. So, the TBMs will be constructing tunnels at various levels, thus using fewer entry and exit points is the most cost-effective means of building a large tunnel network. So, obviously Elon Musk wants to go 100 levels deep, I don't believe that is necessary. 
unless you had a city of, you know, 60, 70 million people. In somewhere like LA, I believe probably somewhere between six to 10, like 10 would be absolutely extreme, but maybe like six or seven levels is, is, is about right for this project, for moving, you know, 80% of people in LA, you'd need six or seven levels. So are you gonna dig individual shafts for each of those tunnels to drop in your TBM? No, because that would cost an absolute fortune. You'd also have to find the land to do that. So why not have one area where you can drop in the TBMs and all, all the TBM exit and entry points are in one area. So you've only paid the land cost of that one area. All your facilities are there and you can drop TBMs in as and when you need them. And this is my proposal. So, as you can see, uh, fairly basic diagram. That's the best I can do, guys. <laughs> I'm certainly not an architect and I never will be, no matter how hard I try. So, what have we got here? This U-shaped picture. So, the centre of this is obviously an empty void. Um, we have shaft walls which are constructed of reinforced concrete. They would be quite wide. And even being quite wide, uh, they would need to be propped with, uh, with steel or steel props to prevent the, any kind of cave-in. Because what you've got to imagine for a shaft of this depth, it will be like being in a submarine. You're in a submarine, you're 300, 400 metres below sea level, that pressure is absolutely insane. And the same goes when you're digging a large trench like this. So what you would do to overcome that is have large steel props uh, left to right, uh, preventing it falling in. And obviously you could remove them as and when you build inside the trench. So the actual amount of props you would need would be determined by the underground substratum or the geology. Obviously, if you're digging into um, a rock, then into, say, a, a granite or quartz or something similar to that, the, the probability of a cave-in um, would be a lot less than if it was some kind of loose material. Um, so that's where you'd make your determination. Also, if you notice here, the wall must act like a retaining wall and be earthquake proof. Obviously in LA, it's an earthquake zone. So that will also determine the thickness of that wall. Top right hand corner of the screen, um, these are your prefabricated uh, wall uh, segments that are dropped into place and then bolted together. That is one option. So what you've got to think about when we're knitting together this system is there will be hundreds of tunnels similar to this cross section above they will all need to be stitched together if we are going to all these various stations obviously each station may have various tunnels stacked upon each other so you'll need to make sure that you can uh, get your tbm underneath a previous tunnel which makes things complicated unless you have one entry point and this is where um, the plan comes into effect. So you start off at level one. Inside that uh, shaft or that trench, you would construct a frame. It would be a temporary steel frame or false work, which could be uh, moved at any time. Um, and in doing so, you could uh, crane in your TBM and then move it into position. So you would start off with the TBM at this point here. Imagine you wanted to build at level two. You would drop it down here to level two. It would sit on this temporary steel uh, false work here. And then you would use um, some kind of equipment to move it sideways into position onto this permanent uh, concrete floor plank which would then be um, propped underneath. You would have to use quite a lot, a lot of false work to ensure this works, but there, there's nothing telling me that this can't be done. Uh, then obviously your TBM would be here. You'd start the tunnel, 
Then maybe you'd drop in a second TBM and then you'd start another tunnel. So you'd have a tunnel going northbound and you'd have a tunnel going southbound using your TBM. And here you go. Here's an example of a breakthrough point in the tunnel, top right. Uh, here we go. Steel frame can be easily altered or removed when new levels are required, thus allowing access below. So once you'd built uh, all your, your tunnels, you could remove that steel um, framework and replace it with something a bit more permanent, uh, maybe a concrete frame that you could then uh, reinforce and then utilize that space for other things. So here's a good example of an actual TBM being dropped into a shaft uh, in London. This is for the Crossrail project. If you notice uh, the, the concrete has been poured in situ, you can tell because it's quite rough on the outside. It is probably very, very thick because the soil um, in London is quite a, a thick kind of gloopy uh, clay. It's almost like a sludge. And, and thus you have to um, work quite hard to keep uh, the uh, shaft from collapsing in on itself. Here's an example of another excavation. You can see the steel props here are holding it up. You need a hell of a lot of props to ensure that this does not coll collapse. Hence, even when the tunnels are completed for the Boeing company, you will need some kind of permanent a steel or concrete structure inside that shaft to ensure that it, it never collapses in on itself, especially if you're in an earthquake zone, which causes all kinds of uh, engineering headaches. Here's a, this is a rectangular uh, shaft. Um, as you can see in the corner there, you have some false work installed. That again is to uh, shore up that weak point there in the corner. This prevents the trench from collapsing in. As you go deeper, you will need more formwork and false work to ensure there isn't a cave-in. So, what have we got here? This, this proposal potentially could work up to 10 or 15, maybe even 15 levels deep. I personally believe it could, it could be. Um, certainly, you could add uh, tunnels as and when you need to. The, the best thing about this potential uh, option is that you can put tunnels underneath existing tunnels, therefore you're stacking the tunnels um, and you can get them in nice straight lines. So if, for example, you are routing the tunnel underneath a highway, well, basically you can just follow the path of the previous tunnel. It's just that, you know, you, you, you say 30, 30 foot, 20 foot below the previous tunnel. So it makes things nice and easy for the planners to visualize. So as you can see, we've got five levels in this particular system. Um, potentially the first level, you could just drop it in straight really, but um, with the actual framework in the shaft, you, you would go in, drop it in, and then use kind of some kind of platform to drop in that tunnel then you could drop in that one, then you could drop in that one, and then you could drop in that one. So you have these five uh, exit and entry points in this one shaft, which is saving you a lot of land and a lot of cost. And it just makes things a lot easier uh, for expanding the system because you're building in um, that potential there to expand the system. It's, uh, it's there as and when you need it. And this is a lot more cost effective than starting again from uh, scratch. You can also build in systems to make it even more cost effective. So for example, over here, you could have a, um, a couple of gantry cranes like this. You've got two gantry cranes and you could use them to excavate the trench. You could also use them for uh, dropping materials into the trench. And potentially you could even use them, uh, maybe if you had uh, two, high capacity gantry cranes, you could use them to actually drop in the TBM. Because it's, as you imagine, a TBM is thousands and thousands of tons in weight. Obviously you drop it in sections, uh, but that is a lot, of a, weight, a lot of weight. So if you could build something there that was fit for purpose, you could keep using it again and again and again, and that would save you a lot of money in the long term. So this is kind of like the finished article really. 
you've dropped in your first five levels of tunnel. Now, once you've got to the bottom of the excavation, you can then double up on that. So you can just drop them straight in and have 10 tunnels. So you can have um, 10. So you'd have 20 TBMs uh, either starting or exiting from this point. Because as you imagine, when the TBM is finished tunneling, maybe you're at the, uh, the, the bound, you're on the outskirts of LA, um, you could just uh, pull it out and bring it back into downtown and start the TBM again. Or even just reverse it and go back into town. Because obviously you would have multiple TBMs working on the system at any one time. Which would be really, really convenient uh, for the actual uh, construction team. So, this area in red is... Um, it either going to be a concrete or a steel frame. I've gone for concrete because concrete has very good compressional um, resistance or compressional strength. Um, in fact, I've still got a steel frame here, but um, the centre core is concrete. These actual uh, uh, floor floor area here is, is steel. Obviously, the trusses used would be far in excess of these here. This is just uh, just so you can visualise it. It'd probably be uh, five, maybe. Yeah, around five foot deep, I'd say. You just have them at, at fewer centres. Um, one thing worth noting is in all space could be utilised above and below ground. So these gaps in between the tunnels here could maybe potentially be used for battery packs. Um, they could potentially be used for escape routes from the system. Um, it could be used for other storage. Um, You've also got to imagine that the land above these uh, shafts is very expensive, especially in LA. Now, obviously, we're not going to use the shaft in the middle of downtown because it'd be impossible to find the land. But if you're within four or five miles of downtown, that land is going to be very expensive. So, my proposal would be building this permanent steel structure, maybe. Um, you, 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 you'd have like a, a concrete road deck above that. Um, a, the actual land above this is very expensive. You'd also have a central a reinforced concrete wall. So you've got a very, very um, structurally uh, sound um, system in there, which is capable of holding immense weight. So just leaving the land above it vacant um, seems a huge waste. Plus, it's also a massive opportunity because if you've got huge amounts of concrete and steel in here, a big you know, frame, lots of cross bracing, you could build on top of that. You could utilize that and you could actually build quite a tall building because if you're going 200 foot deep, the, the ground level though is heavily compacted. Um, it'll, be, it'll be excellent to build on. So you, the deep foundations are perfect for a high-rise multi-use building. So what I'm proposing to the Boeing company is that once they've um, utilized this entire shaft and put in those, uh, those 10 tunnels, that they build a permanent steel structure, that they build uh, permanent um, concrete uh, uh, walls, um, and then they build on top of that, maybe they build you know, a 30, 40 story building like this, and they could build, you know, something that's environmentally sustainable, like this uh, timber building here, which would be perfect. And it'd, it'd really sell um, the company as being environmentally uh, sustainable in doing that. So, I hope you like the idea. Um, it's a proposal. Obviously, it's a lot simpler. Simple. It's, it's very simple just to say it rather than actually doing it. However... Uh, based on my previous experience in the industry, I can tell you right now it is very, very doable. Uh, and the rewards for, um, for building like this could actually you know, lead to maybe a return on the investment of that land. So definitely get, uh, give me your thoughts uh, in the uh, uh, comments uh, and make some comments below. And then I can uh, obviously listen to your points of view on this. So let's have a look at the boring news um, as of today. So... Uh, Tesla stock is up 15%. Elon announced his plan to take Tesla private. So this was completely out of the blue. I was blown away when I noticed this. This is an absolute genius move by Elon Musk 
because he's under immense pressure all the time from the shorts. All the Jim Chainuses and Mark Spiegel putting a lot of pressure on him. This has absolutely destroyed them. They've lost billions. Billions. Uh, so he's offered 420 for the stock to take it private. I, I'm I'm eighty percent confident this confident that this will happen. Probably more than that. I'm very, very, very confident. If Elon Musk says he's gonna do something, there's a very high chance it's gonna happen. Every single short position is going to get liquidated. We're talking billions and billions of dollars lost by the shorts. They will never forgive Elon Musk for this. And it's bloody brilliant because you should never bet against that man. Jim Chaynos and others have lost billions, absolutely billions. Um, at the end of the day, Elon Musk thinks outside the box. No one predicted this. Not even the most pessimistic shorts predicted this they've been absolutely just been outsmarted brilliant also um, spacex held a competition for uh, the hyperloop uh, using the uh, tube that's already there uh, previous winners wore hyperloop one with a speed of 288 miles per hour absolutely outstanding yeah and that's in a very short i believe the tube is less than two kilometers long Maybe slightly above two kilometers, but it's not very long. So imagine if they had, you know, a 20 kilometer tube, they could get well, well up there, could get well up to 400 miles per hour. And this is just sort of a small sort of concept vehicle. Imagine what's going to happen in the next two to three years. So congratulations to War Hyperloop uh, from Germany. They did a fantastic job. Oh, we got a picture of our boring bricks during the competition they released this picture so obviously someone's busy stacking some bricks apologies for this flashing i have no idea what's going on so on the right hand side we've got our uh, brick machine they look very very much like engineering bricks to me which have got very high compressional resistance but are also quite resistant to the ingress of water so in the UK, you would, you would generally use these below ground and also maybe uh, use them for retaining walls just because they're such, um, they've got such good strength compressionally. Another very, very worrying um, bit of news is Ram Emanuel. Now, obviously, Rahm Emanuel is pushing for the Boeing company to build this link in Chicago to uh, the airport. However, to be honest with you, he, he's doing a terrible, terrible job as mayor in Chicago. The school systems are failing and the police are doing a terrible, terrible job. Uh, the communities... Uh, in, in Chicago are just falling apart. Um, last weekend, we had 66 people shot. And of that, 12 people have died. So the reason I'm bringing this up, obviously we're going into politics here, but if things continue the way they're going, Rahm Emanuel is going to get kicked out of office because in all aspects, he, he's doing a poor, poor job um, schools are falling to pieces there's no social cohesion in some parts of Chicago now it, it's complete there's very very high levels of unemployment in some areas and the gang violence is out of control and, and there's no response from him it's, it's all talk and no action and, and that's why we continue to see thousands of people shot every year in Chicago if this continues Potentially he could go, and if he goes, I would suspect that the new person coming in would cancel the Boeing Company project, unfortunately, but that's just how it is. Um, obviously, you know, it's more important that people stay alive than, you know, a big, you know, transportation project gets built, but if he's still around in six months, I'll be quite surprised based on what I've seen. So, guys... Thank you for watching. Tell me what you think about my proposal. It's, it's quite out of the box. 
I appreciate that. But I believe it is a really excellent example of uh, kind of innovative engineering, which allows us not only to build um, several tunnels underneath the main tunnel, but it also allows us to develop that land above the shaft and thus make some money, which you wouldn't believe. If you could build a 30 story building above that shaft, we are talking good money for the Boeing company. And maybe even they could put um, a supercharger, uh, uh, like a Tesla supercharger, inside that building on the ground floor. You know, there's all sorts of potential um, ways you could use, utilize that. You could make the world's biggest battery. You could have a 10 story battery. Just pure lithium Tesla power packs. Boom. That would be immense uh, money earner for Tesla. And then the Boeing company could just lease that land to the Tesla. Or just give it to them for free. Which would probably happen. Because they're part of the same company. So, thank you for watching. I appreciate it, guys. Please like and subscribe. Um, hopefully, I should be getting lots of content out this month. I have booked some time off work. Thank God. I'd like to have a bit of a rest. And, and for me, this is quite therapeutic to release a bit of content. Get my brain going. Get the ideas flowing. Please click the bell uh, so you get the content from YouTube as and when I release it. I appreciate if you'd write some comments down below. Tell me what you think about the channel and about what content you want. And guys, remember, don't be boring. Peace out.